Welcome back to my workshop. In my last video, I started out with a unique piece of leather and I ended up making a rather stylish briefcase out of it. Well, I thought it was stylish. I, I didn't want to sell it. I wanted to keep it. It was that good, but uh, that doesn't pay the bills somehow, so off it's gone. Still, I've got this piece left and I've got to decide what I can do with it. It's a bit of a strange shape. I suppose I could just about get another bag out of it, but it wouldn't be very nice. Um, it would be a bit small and cramped, so I don't really think so. I could make a number of belts out of it, and it would make quite nice belts. I must admit, I'd quite like a belt made of this. I, I really don't want to get rid of this piece of leather. It was that good. Um, mind you, it was a so-and-so to sew. It really is quite hard to work. It's because obviously when they make the surface, uh, they put this make this textured surface, it almost sort of armours the top surface. But what I quite fancy doing is making some clocks. Now this is something I've been doing quite a lot of recently. I mean, as you can see, I've got a, a whole variety of them here, ones that I've made the uh, last couple of days. But these are leather clocks, and I rather like them. I've made a couple. Well, I've made a few. And my customers seem to quite like them as well, so that makes it doubly good. So what we'll do is we'll turn this into a belt and we'll see how many clocks we can get out of it. So there you are, that's the belt cut. And a very nice belt that's going to make two. So we'll put that one to one side. And let's have a little look and see what we've got left. In order to cut the faceplate for a clock, we need to be able to cut a perfect circle. Now you can draw it out and attempt to cut round with a knife if you feel up to it. Or you can do it with one of these. Probably the easiest way to do this is there you are, I've just found the centre. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a, a real old Victorian tool um, yeah that's going to do it this is an old Victorian tool that I managed to get I managed to get in a tool sale in an auction. I'm sure there is a modern equivalent, but I don't know what it is and I don't know where to go and get one. Well, I'm sure if you look carefully you can find them. And you just go at it nice and slowly. Don't try too hard. And just slowly scribe a little bit at a time there you are the perfect circle well that's a good starting point isn't it so what I should do now is cut a few more of those out and then we can have a little bit of a production line going right so I've now got four circles and I'm going to make two different styles of clock. So I've got all of these pieces of leather. Now, there's certain things that are common to all the things you make. First of all, you need to finish the edges. And the first thing you do to finish the edges is you stain them. Nothing looks worse than a sort of a raw edge like that. So you put a bit of edge stain on all the way around. I'm then going to give it a moment or two to dry. And then we'll give it a proper polish. If you look at sort of you know, Western saddlery or something like that, they really polish the edges so they sort of shine. They always, well, they burnish them. Uh, and I quite like that. Right, so I'm going to do two styles. So for the first one, I'll put a line right the way across. do have to have a certain level of accuracy on this so 
So you can see where we're going with this one. We're going to put a mark. I'm effectively putting a rivet on the quarter. And I think this makes a very dignified looking clock. Well, that looks rather nice, doesn't it? And with that sort of textured back, that's very stylish. I'll do the other one. Now for the second style, I'm going to stitch them. So I'm going to mark out the stitches. And I'm doing it with a fairly fine stitch marker. This is a number eight, which means there are nine stitches to the inch. I could go all the way down to a 16, but why make life hard for myself? It's hard enough to try and find the st stitch marks I've had. So we've got some choices. When we stitch it, we can stitch it with white. Could stitch it with black, but I don't think that will show up. Um, or we could stitch it with red. Doesn't really show up, does it? So I think we'll stay. I think we'll stick with white. And there you are. There's the mark. So I need to do that three more times, and once more on another piece. And then they're done so you can now start to see what we're trying to get to but this is not going to work as a clock because it's too flexible now there's a couple of things you can do there's a couple i've made where i've sort of carved the clock face um by which point of course you then soak the the leather then as it dries it dries stiff but uh, the easier way to do it is you cut a donut like this out of mdf Now the hardest part is actually li <laughs> lining it up square. Which is where a pair of dividers comes in beautifully. And then all you need is a weight. Stick the weight on it, come back the next day, leave it overnight and it'll be nicely glued. So this has now had a chance to dry overnight, so we're ready to assemble it. You need yourself a clock movement. You can get these online. They come at all different sorts of prices. Give yourself a treat and buy the good ones. Uh, don't be tempted to buy the ones for a pound. There's usually a reason why they're that cheap. And then all we need now is some hands. I've got a couple of different ones to choose from. I think I quite like those. So I'm not going to bother looking for any others. Um, you do the hour hand first and there you are. All that needs now is a battery. And that's a clock that's done. That's rather splendid, isn't it? Um, I like that. I'm rather proud of that. I'll stick it on the Fitzrobby website. If anybody wants a clock, you know where to come. So there you go. Out of that piece of leather that was left over, we managed to get a whole pile of clocks. I had a rather nice belt. I'm very taken with the clocks. Um, this... This one in particular, I think he looks gorgeous. It's only a shame I can't get any more of that leather. I shall have to go back and see if I can. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go and have a look at some of the other videos on my channel. You never know, you might like those as well. It's always a danger. In the meantime, you'd rather help me if you press the subscribe button. I'm gonna quickly clear up, put this little lot away, and then I'm gonna get on with my day job, which is making wagon wheels. Um, I've got a whole pile of them to make. It keeps me busy and hopefully we can keep you entertained.
Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.